The Mazda RX-8 is such a fun car, but it is slow. Mazda claims that the manual versions had a 5.9 second, zero to 60, but man, I don't know who was driving for that. It had to have been Don Toretto because no average driver is pulling a 5.9 second, zero to 60 in the RX-8. It's not necessarily a slow car. A 5.9 second, zero to 60, if it were true, was actually pretty good for the time period that the RX-8 came out, but the biggest problem is that the tiny little 1.3 liter engine only puts out about 140 wheel torque. When you're hitting that 9,000 RPM red line, there is a really big point within that RPM range where you just feel like the car is not moving any faster because it just doesn't have any torque there. If I remember correctly from my RX-8 ownership days, it's usually somewhere around 6,000 or 6,500 RPMs all the way from there up to 9,000, you really just feel no torque. But it is extremely fun to own, extremely fun to drive. While I wouldn't say it's fast in a straight line, it is quick and it's fast around a track. And that is really the biggest strong suit of the RX-8 is its handling. Back in the day, it won top 10 best handling cars for under $100,000. So at the time it was beating out Porsches, BMWs, and all these other more expensive, more prominent sports cars. So from a handling standpoint, it is such a great car. It just needs a little bit more power, and that's what we're here to talk to you about today. I'm gonna go ahead and walk through every potential modification that you can make to the Mazda RX-8 to get more horsepower out of it. And I'm also gonna go ahead and talk about engine power limits to let you know how far you can push these engines on bolt-on modifications and with forced induction. So the biggest limiter to the RX-8 is obviously that it's a 1.3 liter engine. It does produce decent amounts of horsepower, but once you take a stock engine and put it on the dyno and factor in all of the drivetrain losses, you get a 13B Renesis rotary engine that will dyno about 180 to 185 wheel horsepower and about 140 wheel torque. Naturally aspirated with every modification that you can throw at it, you're looking at about a 225 wheel horsepower max without sacrificing drivability significantly. Bolt-on modifications will get you to about 210 wheel horsepower. And then to get from 210 to 225, we're gonna have to look into engine porting. Beyond 225 wheel horsepower, you're going to need a turbocharger or a supercharger, which can get you to around 300 wheel horsepower on the stock motor. But I will say at 300 wheel horsepower, you're probably not gonna have too much more than 10 to maybe at max 20,000 miles of reliability left in the engine. It just doesn't handle additional power that well. And the extra power puts a lot of additional stress on the apex seals. If you don't have a built motor or upgraded or stronger apex seals, then you're going to run into a reliability limit once you look into forced induction. And then 400 wheel horsepower is achievable, but for 400, you're gonna need a built motor and forced induction. Ultimately, it's not a very tuner friendly car. We're talking about getting 25 wheel horsepower out of it with bolt-on modifications and maybe up to 40 or 50 wheel horsepower once we look into engine porting. These modifications or some degree of these modifications are worth it just because every little bit of extra power you can squeeze out of the RX-8 just makes it a little bit more fun. So let's go ahead and jump through our list here. The first one is gonna be tuning. Tuning's where you're gonna get your biggest bang for your buck. You're not gonna see huge power gains from it. You're probably looking at eight to 10 wheel horsepower, maybe with the right custom tuning and all of the bolt-on modifications, you can get 12 to 15 out of it. Tuning's gonna be your biggest power gains. You just don't get that many power gains out of it but it's still gonna be the number one option for power as well as just for optimizing the efficiency of the engine. From there, we're gonna look at cold air intakes. You're not gonna get too much power here, probably two to four wheel horsepower when tuned as well as running all these other modifications, but it's worth it just to squeeze a little bit of additional power out of it. After an intake, we're coming up to exhaust modifications. And let me tell you, do not straight pipe your RX-8. I was 18 years old back in the day 
and I took my RX-8 and I straight piped it. And there is nothing cool about having the loudest car when you have 200 wheel horsepower and can do nothing to back up the loud sounds that come out of it. But anyways, when it comes to exhaust upgrades, the first thing is gonna be headers. Headers are gonna be the biggest power gains from the exhaust system. You're gonna get about five wheel horsepower out of it. Headers are worth it just because they add solid power. It helps free up some of the exhaust flow. Headers are probably right up there with a mid pipe, especially if you're gonna go with a catless mid pipe, then a catless mid pipe is probably actually gonna add a little bit more power than headers would. You'll see around five to seven wheel horsepower with a catless mid pipe. Getting a catless mid pipe is gonna be the most beneficial since that's one of the most restrictive parts of the exhaust system. And then from there, you have a cat back exhaust system. A cat back is worth it if you like the sound benefits that you're gonna get. You will get a deeper exhaust note, especially from headers, but also from a catless mid pipe, but it's not quite gonna add that really loud sound that you're gonna get from a cat back. But a cat back is probably only good for about two to three wheel horsepower. So it really is kind of more of a sound modification than it is a power modification. But if you're trying to squeeze everything out of this engine then get a cat back exhaust as well. Those are really our main power adding modifications. From here, we've got a lightweight flywheel. This is more of a weight savings benefit. You're not gonna get any power gains, but you will get a lot more throttle response and it'll help improve your acceleration. So it is good for zero to 60 acceleration, even though it doesn't add a whole lot of power. And then the same things to be said for pulleys. With upgraded pulleys, it's really more of a weight reduction mod here. Again, you'll, you might get one to two wheel horsepower out of it. You'll notice some faster acceleration, some better throttle response, but there also are a lot of downsides to pulleys. Pulleys have more downsides than they do benefits. It causes a lot of problems with all of the accessories that the pulleys drive. Generally speaking, not something that I would necessarily recommend, but you do get a little bit of speed and power benefits out of it. And so I'm mentioning it here for that reason. And so that's kind of it for our basic bolt-on modifications. That's maybe not every single one that you could do, but it's every single one that's worthwhile to add power and the combination of all of those things is what will get you around that 210 wheel horsepower mark. You can avoid the lightweight flywheel and the pulleys if you wanna save some money and you're really only looking for power modification since those two things don't really add a whole lot. Basically, you're looking at tuning and intake and then a full exhaust system and that'll get you to about that 210 wheel horsepower level. To get beyond 210 wheel horsepower and stay naturally aspirated, we've got engine porting. And basically what that is is increasing the size of the intake and exhaust ports within the engine. This does require the engine to be pulled and to be pulled apart to go ahead and pour out the intake and exhaust valves. And so it's something that's worthwhile to do if you're rebuilding your engine and it's already taken apart, then it's not gonna be that much more expensive. But if you're just looking at doing this with a healthy engine, it's gonna be quite expensive because you are gonna to have to pull the motor and put it back together. Porting is great if your engine's apart, it's worth it for the power gains. It's gonna be the biggest power gains that you get from a naturally aspirated performance modification. It's just probably behind tuning because tuning is a lot easier to do and you need tuning anyways to maximize porting. So that's it for naturally aspirated modifications. From there, we're looking solely at forced induction to be able to get us beyond the 225, maybe 235 wheel horsepower range. There are a lot of kits out there. There's turbochargers, there's also superchargers too. I'm more of a fan of turbocharging for the RX-8, but there are some superchargers that are an option as well. The downside to forced induction is one, you significantly impact reliability. The other downside to turbocharging is that it's expensive. To get a full kit and then all of the supporting modifications and upgrades that you need, you're probably going from a completely stock car, you're probably over $10,000 in on a build, unless you're going to try to DIY and piece together your own kit and things like that. So Forced induction is cool, but there are just a lot of downsides and considerations to get there. So overall, these cars are extremely fun. They just don't produce that much power, and it's because it's a 1.3 liter motor, and it doesn't have a whole lot of torque, and you can feel the lack of torque. And the other thing is they're just not that capable unless you add forced induction, but even with that, from a reliability standpoint, it's difficult to consider these tuner-friendly or modification-friendly cars. But if you wanna pick up some power, 
drop a tune on there, an intake, a full exhaust system, and I promise you 210 wheel horsepower. Might not sound like a lot, but it is a lot more fun and it is noticeable compared to a 180 wheel horsepower stock RX-8. Add a little bit of extra power and then focus on suspension and handling upgrades and you're gonna have yourself a very fun little car. Anyways guys, that covers it for my video on RX-8 performance modifications. If you like this video, please click the like button, show some support and subscribe to our channel. The more of you that subscribe, the more likely it is I'll be able to do a serious RX-8 build in the future.